Hi and welcome back to another video of JPlay. I am Marcus and as you can see today I'm walking you through a couple of rounds of Carvey's Hans im Glück latest game. Unfortunately it doesn't come with a solo mode yet. Not sure if there will be one anytime soon. I haven't seen anything so I will have to play this dual handedly so bear with me. I'm really trying to do the best that I can. It's I think really quite a brainy game actually so don't expect any expert level gameplay from me you should never expect that from me anyway <laughs> that's a different story and yeah that's basically what i'm doing and also not sure if i will be doing a full playthrough or not that depends a little bit on you if you're interested or not i think today i might be going through the full first round of three in a two or three player game in a four player game we are playing four rounds but then we will also each player will only use one die in a two or three player game every player will use two of these action selection dice which is a very nice mechanic in this game nothing groundbreakingly new in respect to this dice placement basically the last die or the last let's call it worker will always be first to go next and then we are triggering some action but then you have to pay for the action i think this is where with beer obviously because we are vikings after all but basically what i'm getting at i'm not sure if i will be covering a full playthrough of this game in Carvey, we are vikings raiding and trading with the english islands i think we can even go to iceland and some other of these lions i think the map is layout basically the way how the board i have layout is pretty much wrong so we should that do that in this orient no in this orientation actually london should be at the south of england obviously as usual i will explain the game as i go so i have set up the game for a two player game there are two sides of this game board so this is the side for the two or three players on the other side is a four player map with some more spaces basically um the only other balancing in respect to player count is the amount of pillaging or raid tiles and these trade tiles and on the action selection board some of the actions are basically blocked for a two-player game it's printed here on the board that this space is only available in a three plus player game each player starts the game with a starting card that tells you basically when it is your turn to start i think we draw on the three and the five so this is the card for the blue player with the three the lowest value card will go first and last basically but i will come to that it will show you the starting resource so we have fur we have gold we have some warriors here we have a ship card and we have some provisions and this is how we are setting our dice on the action selection board so each die should show to beer and as for the orange player this is their starting card basically with one silver three fur one gold a warrior with a strength of three also two provisions and basically the very same dice in respect to those dice you place them here on the starting and kind of end zone of the action selection board here so the first player will have the, one of their dice on the number six a uh, one and the number six then the second player on two and five if there would have been a third player would be on three and four obviously and in a four player game i already mentioned it each player will only have one dice at their disposal so in this case we will first have the blue player then orange then orange again then the blue player and so on you get the idea i'm pretty sure you have seen this kind of mechanic in game like tokaido for example let's get started or maybe let's have a yeah i think there's one more thing i need to do and this is in respect to these rune stone tiles here we get one for free now as part of setup all the others we need to unlock later on first of all we need to pay cost for that so in this case five first and or silver and we have to meet certain conditions here for example two of these towers on the board the first one we are getting free and this simply gives you i would say early direction on where you want to get to having these trade tiles here is always good because they will score you quite well at the end of the game these are what are these other cards trade cards actually they're also quite powerful usually you get though uh, those through this so hmm, they work quite well together actually this one here is i would think relatively easy to achieve and i think i want easy so we are getting this again we can't ignore all the requirements on this runestone tile we simply place it in onto our board and again there it gives us an end game scoring opportunity as for the orange player i decided to go with this starting runestone here so this tells you you have to have played five of these equipment cards until or 
until the end of the game or 9 for 8 or 18 points respectively. Those cards, improvement or upgrade cards or whatever they refer to, are really extremely powerful. But I also found them to be not, I would not think imbalanced, but I think they have really different strength and weakness. I think they are very situational. Sometimes one of these cards can be the greatest thing at that point in time. Sometimes you really, yeah, I don't know, they really just clog up your hand. But anyway, I do think we are ready to start the game. All our Viking ships start down here in Kaupanger, and I'm relatively certain I'm butchering the, all those names. London, I'm relatively certain about. Lindisfarne, I think as well. Also highly thematic that we are starting with a relative low defense kind of ray tile there. Really like that a lot. Actually, I, be I believe this was the first official time when Vikings started to raid England or so. Could be terribly wrong, but I think at least it has some relation to that. So blue is first. During your turn, you get to take any amount of these free actions here. The only limitation that is that you can move your ship only once during your turn, unless you're getting a free movement or so, but with a standard free action, you can only do that ever once. All the other things like playing upgrade or improvement cards or exchanging cards for gold, this is something that you can do pretty much indefinitely until you're running out of cards and or resources. And then on top of this, you are basically doing your main action, which means that you are moving your dice, you're paying the cost um, that this space is worth it. So it's zero to two, and I think there is only also one with three down there. And then you will get to take the action, and then it's basically um, the end of your turn. You can play these cards, you can take these free actions pretty much at any point during your turn. So you could also first take your main action and then move your ship, for example, or you can move your ship, take your main action and then play a card. It's pretty much up to you and everything that you get usually you can use right away. So if you go something and you get a different additional card, then you might still want to play that card right away. And yeah, it can lead to some downtime, but overall, I don't think it's that bad. But you really have a lot of freedom planning out your turn, which I think is really a good thing in this game. So in this case, I guess we want to move first and in theory we can move our little ship as many spaces as we want but of course for every space that we are moving to we have to spend one provision so each of these ships has currently two provisions on them that's also predefined on your starting card here and managing your provisions and the beer on your dice is absolutely key in this game and i suck at this again don't expect any expert level play in this one here but in order to move from here to there, you have to spend one provision. In, you can move over other ships. That's fine. It simply costs us one extra movement point. You can even end your movement in the same space, but then you have to push the other ship away, either by military force, then it's free if you're stronger than that player, or you are doing this by paying them a provision, you're bribing them. In this case, because blue is first, I think we want to spend one provision. This always comes from your ship. It goes to your supply. And for that, we are moving one space to Lindisfarne. So history repeats itself here. And in Lindisfarne, we currently have two of these ray tiles waiting for us. So it's always one tile per player. And you can only ever have one tile of the same iconography here. So I think this is a bore. The blue player couldn't go there again later on and take the second tile there which means again you will always have some but the first player to go to a location like this has first dips on those tiles it shows you how much military strength you have so this requires a military strength of two unfortunately blue only has a military strength of one right now but at this point in time it doesn't really matter because all that we are doing right now is more or less designing our little or planning our little raid so we take any one of those and then with a later action, we will then be able to trigger that particular raid. So both of those have equal amount of strength. They come with different kind of, let's say, penalties. So this is the damage that we're getting, but they're also giving you more yeah, rewards. I think higher risk, higher reward, right? Makes sense. So this one gives you two victory points, one gold and one fur, only give you one damage. This gives you four victory points and two gold. And gold is a universal resource in this game, which you can use for all kinds of stuff. And I think I want, yeah, let's go for the higher one. I mean, we want to win this game with victory points. So we are taking the higher one. The other one goes back 
face down. We are taking this red tile and we are placing it next to our player board. And there it is basically waiting for us until we are finally hitting or doing the actual raid. This was one of our free actions. In theory, we have one of these blue cards here, which we could play for the price of one silver and one fur. Right now, we don't have any silver, but again, we do have gold. Gold is a universal resource. We can immediately trade it into silver. This would either allow us to unlock another trade post. Right now, we only have one trade post, but as we still have that raid post, this action right now doesn't really make sense. Or we could move our ship three spaces for free, which is very, very powerful. Because again, I mentioned that provision management is huge. But I think we already moved our ship. I'm quite happy with where we are. So we are simply not playing that card just yet. We will move our very first die. Again, we have to go with the last one. In this case, we can move it pretty much any number of spaces so we have to move out of the stop zone here so we can't move into that space that is not allowed but basically on this area we can move it anywhere we would like of course the farther we get the sooner our turn might be over because once a die is basically back here that's ground end for that particular die in a two three play game we have two dice but still you get the idea in this case i do think we want to spend uh, we want to gain some more resources or we want to get those vikings here both of those are nice and i think i want some more vikings so how this works is we want to move to this space it has a cost of two of one which means we have to spend one beer from our die, drilling it down. So we have paid the cost and now we can take the action, which in this case means we are taking two level one Vikings and place them on our Viking ship here. So our total strength, we have now up from one to three, not too bad. And it will also help us to satisfy the requirements of one of our stern tiles here, basically have to Vikings on your ship. We have three, that is fine, more than enough. Not true sure if I want this particular stern because this one is definitely much better, but I'm not sure if we'll be able to reach that easily, but I think we can. But okay, that's the end of our turn. Again, I'm not going for any more free action, so we are handing things over to the orange player. Also, orange can now move their ship or they can take their action first. I think think we either want to build a trade post which is never a bad thing giving us new stuff and with also helping us with a sail tower we are working towards i think that might be actually a good idea we could also sail here to avaldens avaldsness oh gosh i'm really butchering those names building a tower um, which would also give us, it will also help us with a sale upgrade later on. Or we could simply go here to Pirawal for a trade tile, which would be a trade tile for the blue player as well. So maybe I should have gone there with the blue player. So I'm already failing you. But I think because it's not so important for the orange player, I think you can do two things. I guess yellow will spend one provision to move one space here to Ulstein. And there we are allowed to place one of our trade posts. Right now we have unlocked basically both of them pretty much as part of setup. We are placing it on the leftmost space. So orange is already leading the field with three victory points. Hooray. And again, you do these things, grabbing a tile, placing a, a building also as part of your free or not free. Again, you can also move through other means, through cards, for example. But again, building those buildings or claiming those tiles, that's part of your movement action. And now we are triggering our die. And in fact, Orange knows that they have two turns in a row. And I think we want more resources for sure. So we are moving here to this space. This costs us also one beer. And there we will simply claim two fur and one silver, which we need for all sorts of stuff. So we have a good amount of resources. Now again, I could still take free actions. Of course, I already moved my ship, so I can't no longer do that. I could exchange this gold and I can exchange this gold for either increasing the value on my die, very powerful. I could also use the gold to get provisions in order to move my ship, also important. But I think right now, let's not do that. Let's go to the next turn. And as mentioned, that's still the orange player here. Again, we can still move our ship. And I think that's what I'm going to do 
first actually because then I know what I may need to go for actually so I will spend one more provision so we are provision free basically right now we are floating here in the I think sea is North Sea I guess and we'll move here to Nidaros Nidaros we are taking one of those tiles I'm not showing these to you I'm playing the orange player blindly and we'll place the tile right next to the orange players player board we still have to move our die though and I think we want to move here to do the upgrade action or working action also or we could directly fulfill the trade tile we have just gathered by taking this action here trade action but i think because we know blue doesn't have a tile just yet and we are next anyway i think we are safe to move our die here to the upgrade action again costing us one beer we are taking this working action here which either allows you to draw any one of those cards and these cards come in two stages on top of these respective decks are level one cards and then they're level two cards the level two cards are somewhat more powerful i would think yeah i think they definitely are or alternatively we can do an upgrade action here so for example we could build our stern upgrade because we have fulfilled the requirement on this one here having built either a tower or a trade post and we just did that during our last turn and in order to do that we have to simply spend two leather and or silver to place it here and then with any upcoming upgrade action we would gain one of these beer cards or meat card is it meat or beer i think it's beer right i think it's beer so i think that's what i'm going to do actually unfortunately it doesn't trigger on its own so we can't build it here and then trigger it right away this is really for future actions only but i think let's do that i will spend two of my fur because i think i need the silver yeah let's definitely do that so we have again fulfilled the requirement here we will immediately collect two more points for covering that space and from now on when we are taking this action we are getting one of these cards for free this is extremely powerful and helpful yeah i definitely like the series of events there nicely done orange over to blue and i think we are not going to move our ship normally we will take our die action first we're moving to this base this gives us one silver and one fur in theory i could have gone for the freebie as well that's a good thinking but i think i want no i think let's be efficient we want the fur here as well then we take a free action and with the free action we are triggering this card now which says spend one silver spend one which we did and then we get to choose one of those either unlocking another trade post here we get this other ways too but this would be a free unlock of this trading post or we can move our ship three spaces ahead and i think that's what i'm going to do so by playing this card we get to take three movement actions of course we don't have to pass pay the provisions in this case and again the idea was to move to pyro wall now so i think it worked out to be okay one and two unfortunately any excess movement is now lost but that is okay for me we hold on to this card face down we can't play it again but it will still count for all sorts of other requirements and or victory points at the end of the game and whatnot and of course then we are taking one of these two traitors here that's an interesting one that's an in oh yeah i know it says on this it needs two heights or first basically so those tiles always show you roughly what they need and or how much they need and what they need basically and in this case oh that's an interesting one we could go for two trade cards or one trade card and two victory points but this is only two fur and we only have two fur and i think we want to achieve this one yeah let's go for the easy one first the other one goes back to the spot for the orange player to come we will also place this tile next to our player board right now we can't we have to take an action in order to meet the requirements here and in theory we can still take the free action with our ship keep in mind we have moved our ship but we have moved the ship with the card so the free movement with the ship is still possible so in theory we could move to Yalsov here 
getting this, I don't know, what is it? Salmon, salmon tile or so. It would require three to six silver. Right now we have three gold. Again, that's a universal resource, but there are ways getting those resources, obviously. But because it's our turn anyway, again, I don't think there is an immediate rush. So we move to our next turn. And you might remember that is still the blue player here. So I guess now we are spending our provision on our ship, also the last provision to move to Jarlshof here. Again, same exercise. Oh, for five or six, we, ooh, we had two and three victory points. That's rather huge actually. So in this case, I don't think it does matter too much if it's five or six. So we are going, we are reaching for the sky here. Basically we are putting this on back for now and we're also placing this next to our player board and we can have any amount of these tiles next to our player board again, but each symbol can only ever appear once in our entirety of our gaming area here. If it's next to our player board or on our player board. So we will have to be able to place up to six of these tray tiles and similarly up to six of these ray tiles onto our board, but that's it. But okay then, let's trigger our dice. And now this is kind of bad news for the orange player. He kind of anticipated things, but he was hoping that blue would not do would do something different. But I think blue may want to fulfill the requirement of one of their trade tiles. So we're moving this die to the trade action. We are going down to zero. So this die is basically empty. Again, there are ways how we can refill our drinking horns here um, but right now it's empty but we can still move to zero cost spaces obviously but in this case we want to fulfill this trade requirement here we will have to spend one two of our furs nicely done we will immediately collect two victory points so finally we are on the board as well on top of this we are also allowed to grab one of these trade cards and they can be quite powerful actually and here we have to choose one of the three that are on display we can't go for the top most card unfortunately so this is what we have to work with so it's either a level two warrior and a beer card two silver and we can up our one of our dice by one so recharging that also not terrible or a gold and two silver hmm and this would definitely help us in many ways actually but getting more flexibility on dice i will go for this card here so this gives us two silver i take that and then we can upgrade not basically increase the value on one of our dice by one and now i have to think do i want to die with a value of two or do i want two dice with value one each and looking ahead of ourselves i think Thing because there are ways to do that. No, I think we want to increase that value here back to one. Again, this was triggered through this card. Like all the other cards that you're playing, we are flipping them face down. There could be effects throughout the game that will depend on how many of these cards we have played. So we're simply playing it next to our player board. And last but not least, we are moving the trade tile we have just completed on top of our trade track here from left to right. When we place the next one, we will unlock our next trading house, our next trading post here. And we just also have upgraded our beer refill action. Normally we would start with a plus two with our first trading tile, we would now get a plus three. And this is an action we are about to take relatively soon. And at the end of the game, the yellow trade tiles here are pretty much a multiplier. So they are a square. So one times one, two times two, three times three. So basically up to 36 points we can get through these trade tiles here alone. Over to the orange player. And I think we want to spend one gold to get one provision right now. Should we do that? Yeah, I think we need those tiles. So in theory, we would take it back and would place a provision, but I'm going to spend that provision right away to move here to Underhaul. And we will take one of those tiles, which we will also place next to his player board. And right now they are face down, but somehow I have to remember what those are because otherwise I will play really, really poorly for the orange player, even poorer than I usually play. <laughs> then we have to move the orange player's die. Hmm. We can't really rate in theory we could, but we don't have the strength of eight on this tile. This is pretty transparent. Right now, the orange player has a strength of three. 
we could have traded here uh we could have spent our gold for that but then yeah the die would be also down to zero um, and i think there is another way how we could trade later on at least i hope so i think it's either another warrior with a strength of two or we can go for i think an income action yeah gain income action exactly which would upgrade our warriors where we could gain some more stuff again usually extremely helpful but i think i want to unlock that tile so we will move our die here to this space it goes down to a zero and therefore we are grabbing a level two warrior and placing it onto our long ship here and i really do like the different artwork for, for these warriors really nice and overall the game is very very beautiful to look at okay then it's blue and i think blue as a blue player we can go for a successful raid action so we will move our die we're not taking our free action just yet we're moving it over here and the only raid tile we can currently raid was lindisfarne which we kind of reserved later on so we were telegraphing we are coming or whatever so in order to raid lindisfarne we have to come up with two strength points which right now is not a problem we have three so we have already basically we were successful that much is clear next we have to take two points worth of damage here depicted by this little explosion symbol which means we have to either injure two of our vikings one stage each or we can basically kill one of our vikings so with one damage injury we can flip them to the other side they are now red they are still counting as a full warrior so no real penalties here they still contribute one strength point and whatnot oh and then for the second point we could either again flip this fella over here as well so we have satisfied the requirements or on alternative we could say we don't really care about that level one viking here we could immediately instead of flipping her taking out the first point of damage flipping her and then removing her from our longship this would immediately give us one point so each viking or will enter valhalla of course and yeah will collect points but these vikings will also give you those points at the end of the game anyway so i think in this case let's try to hold on to our vikings as much as we can so we have satisfied the requirements of this tile here if we wouldn't have enough vikings to satisfy the injuries that is still fine any access would simply be lost but okay to the victor the spoils i think they say so we get two gold which is pretty nice and we are also collecting Four victory points here which we certainly take here for the blue player nicely done and last but not least we are adding the tile to our raid track here and now we have unlocked this let's say special powerful so whenever we are gaining provisions we now gain three provisions instead of two which is very very powerful thing to have unfortunately we are not getting any end of game multiplier here they simply give you points what's printed on them and additional goodies as you have seen but again the let's say the the multiplying only happens here on the trade track we could now debate to transform two of our gold into provision to move our ship ahead but i think right now oh yes it could actually help us to some extent bringing out our towers and again towers help us with more raiding values and again we can upgrade our vikings and the more strength they have the more victory points they will give the more they will help us on raids obviously and we have a lot a lot of gold actually but again we also want to hold on to that gold for this trade tile here so we can transform this gold into silver for example for two of these trade cards and through points and again we would edit here unlock this so i think for now let's try to hold on to our gold that's basically what i'm trying to say here over to the orange player i believe they can't move their ships so we are going how oh, that's the question do we want to go for more resources or do we want to go to the only space right now that is available right that's the only one exactly to gain provisions and i think that's what i'm going to do so in a four player game all three of those spaces are here in a three player game all three spaces are available but again we have two dice so still two players could go there so i think in this case yeah let's do that so we are 
jumping quite ahead right now, moving on to this space, which is kind of bad news for the blue player, obviously. And now we are triggering the provisions action. And again, we check how advanced we are on that. Our base value is a two. Unfortunately, we haven't successfully raided yet. We simply get only two of these provisions. But in theory, we could immediately use those provisions to move, for example, here to Piro Wall. I think that's the one we don't have yet. Exactly. That's the one that the blue player has received. Of course, we could also go in here, push the other player away because I think we are stronger. The question is, what do we want more? I think for the orange player, because we have an excess of first, but nothing really for silver spending those two yes we will spend those two right away actually to move our ship one two spaces here to Piro wall grabbing this trade tile away i have to look at it and that's basically i think we have seen this i have shown this both to you so i think i can show this we're not playing a memory game here so we need for first unfortunately orange player only has three right now and that was their free action they're not playing any cards no i think that's basically it over to blue, we can't play any cards because we don't have. We could still use gold to move our ships. I'm still not certain if we should do that right now. Uh, let's not do that. No, I think we will move our die. We have to move it to a zero space. But again, we can also spend one gold, actually. That's something we could consider now. Let's do that. Yeah, we will spend one gold to upgrade this to a one. That is allowed. I think it was, yeah, but it doesn't matter. Then we are using this die to move here to the gain income space. This one is a locked space, by the way, which is something we have to unlock through either our trade track or our raid track here. And once we have unlocked either of those, when we get to this locked space, we can get this or that. If we have unlocked both, we have to choose one of those. We are not getting them both. But right now, again, we haven't unlocked it yet, so it's basically a mood discussion. So again, we are gaining some income here. So we are bringing this die down to one, a uh, zero. And for the income action, we get one resource of our choice for free and one Viking upgrade. And then depending on what we have built, we get more stuff. Unfortunately, the blue player hasn't built any buildings yet. And now I kind of regret that actually. But yeah, that's how poorly I'm playing here. So we only get the base so one silver or one fur and one viking upgrade and i think we need silver for our little trading tile here and then we get a viking upgrade and viking upgrade means we are removing one and replacing it with the next tile level highest level on these vikings is a six by the way i think i will go for the healthy one for now so this goes back to the box and now i'm not sure if we should should try to find one with this section yeah you get the idea right so but now we have a total strength of four which isn't terrible at all and then i think yeah blue is actually next and yeah we could still use gold now but i don't want to spend that much gold so i think it's time to get some beer we will go to this space and again we check our little beer tracker here um because we already have successfully traded once we get a plus three instead of a plus two unfortunately those two are not cumulative but we can distribute those three points amongst our dice as we see fit so i think we will place two on our leading die right now and one goes to our backward. Normally I would increase the backwards one, but in this case, everything is blocked anyway. So I don't think it matters too much. Could be terribly wrong though, but I think let's that. We are not taking any free actions right now with the blue player, so we can directly stay here and move over to the orange player. They will have to get some more beer as well. Their beer upgrade, unfortunately, is only a one. So I I think we want a one here, yeah, and a two here. So we have some more options. I don't think we need a two and a, th a three and a zero. We are not taking any free actions with orange either. Then it's back to blue. And now I do think we should actually spend two gold before we are triggering our 
dice to add two provisions to our ship which we will immediately use one and two and then we get the remaining one here that's only four more silver but seven victory point and a trade card that is not terrible then it's our die and oof, this this or that they're all equally tasty quite honestly and i'm somewhat somewhat even if it's, a, if it's a far leap i want to do this stern tile here but therefore i have to jump all the way in here there is one more there so i could gain one of those anyway unless again i want to use the three for this tray tile here because there is a zero there but I know Orange is also very keen on that zero. So I'm not sure if I should bank on that or not. So should I go for the safe one here? And I think I am actually. So we are moving all the way over here. I'm pretty sure it's terribly wrong for the upgrade action. And the idea is to build this stern here. We have successfully traded with that trade colony, wherever it was, this pile of rocks here. So the requirement has been met. We have to spend two things. So I will spend two silver now in this case. We will flip it back over. We are immediately getting the two points. I will do that off camera in a second. And now the next time we are triggering the upgrade action, Orange has a similar tile. We would get the ship card, which are very, very powerful and allow you to move across the Northern Sea, of course. Yeah, I think that might have been worth it. Let's see about that. Whew. Then it's orange and I think hmm, this or that. Do we want upgrades? Hmm, getting a free upgrade for one of our Vikings isn't bad. Plus, yeah, we get two resources. No, I think for us, for orange, it's better to move in here. Again, we get one resource but because orange already built one of their trading posts they get an extra one resource of any kind again resources are always either fur or silver never gold or provisions and whatnot and yeah i think right now we need both silver and gold actually ah silver and fur actually so we'll take this respectively and on top of this we are upgrading this viking to a three or the other one to a four does it matter too much i don't think so let's find a level three viking another nail in this case and now we have upgraded the orange player strength to a six we need eight for this ray tile here back to blue and originally they were going to oof, they were going to trade here that's at least for possibility but because i have spent my gold and i still think it was worth it i'm not going to so either i now go in here spending one and basically moving hopping over those i can't currently not raid because yeah, i don't have any raid tiles left so maybe i will now torture the orange player again and move with this guy all the way over here to upgrade i think that's what i'm going to do so i will move over here basically going down i can't find the symbols on this guy going down to two we are triggering the upgrade action which also triggers our stir now so we are allowed to take a ship card from top of the deck and for this play i'm playing openly and for one silver and one fur we could simply gain two provisions which isn't bad actually so let's park that card here for now and for the upgrade action hmm, we could actually consider no yeah we could do this again but then we would overbuild this and i think that's not what i'm going to do here for five points hmm yeah we didn't fulfill either of those requirements we have them both right now but we haven't fulfilled them yet so we can't do them either and similarly here i think we can't afford those so this is also not going to happen so i think we will simply go for another card actually and again i'm thinking about going for a ship card again which allows us to move warrior cards are great they can mess with your warriors obviously or we can go for a beer card or is it, is it me i think it's beer actually which can help us with our dice and i think that's what i'm going to 
go for. And this is actually a nice one. So for two fur, we can either increase the value of our dice by two. And I think even here we can separate it as far as I know, or we can simply collect four victory points, which right now is a little bit lame. But that's basically the blue player's turn. Are they going to move? Hmm, I don't think so. So hmm, they could by spending another of their gold moving him to Ulstein again. And I think it's Holstein. Could this be Holstein, Germanic Holstein? Could be. And yeah, move in here for two points. And we can also bring out our trading post. Maybe that's not the worst thing to do. Yeah, let's do that. So again, we are spending one precious gold for one provision. This allows us to move over here. And then we will build our trading post for two more victory points. Okay, then it is orange twice. First of all, we will go in here for sure. Yeah, this goes down to zero. And in this case, orange gets a fur and a silver. Then I think we will go with this die. Hmm, we could go over here actually, or we could simply say we want something tasty here because there is another upgrade. So if we go in this space, we get beer and an upgrade. And the upgrade gives us one more beer card. Hmm. Or do we want m even more resources here? But I think it's not necessarily necessary because it doesn't get us to the eight strength points we need anyway, right? With this, I guess we want to trade. Exactly. Yeah, I think let's save that die here the pip goes over into the next round we could gain provisions or beer or we can do the upgrade and the beer upgrade and then that's what i'm going to do so i will place that die in here so we get it both actually first of all let's start with the beer our beer upgrade is still only a two which i think means we are bringing this to a one and this goes to a two. So at least we have some beer to start with into the next round. And for our ship upgrade, or sorry, our upgrade actually, we are going for one of those Viking helmet cards here, which could give us all kinds of nasty or helpful stuff usually. It's still the orange player's turn and that is not unusual as I also learned yesterday with a player who has easily taken 10, 11, 12 more turns than I did throughout the game. At least that's how I felt. That really quite a, quite a few more than I did. And again, I do think I need this trading because I don't, an orange doesn't necessarily know what blue has in respect to their tiles. So I think, yeah. Let's do that. So we are moving on to this space here. This will also secure us first dips or basically the first turn of the next round, actually. Yeah, let's trade. We can only trade once, actually, not twice. So which one do I want to fulfill? I think I can fulfill them both, actually. And I think in this case, I will go for this one here for the orange player. So we are spending four of our furs. This will give us two of these trade cards. They're not refilling. They only ever refill at the very end of our round. So the maximum amount of cards that you can take during your turn is three. So I will definitely go for this one here because I need the Viking and getting this beer card is definitely helpful. So we're taking the beer card here. Again, I'm not showing this to you. This is hidden. The stuff for the orange player. Of course, the Vikings are open in formation. Now we do have enough strength point to successfully raid that ray tile here. We still get to take one more card. And in this case, I will go for this one. Yeah, we get some fur back, which we definitely need. So here is one fur and we get any one blue card. And I think I want to go for a ship card next, which we hopefully can use during our later turn. I mean, we can use it right now, actually, but we are not refilling it. We are placing it still next to our player board. Again, there could be conditions that are triggering of it and after checking our cards i think i will end the turn and the round for the orange player so we are refilling the display here now that's also not too terrible actually and then we are basically moving over to the blue player who has a zero on this so i think we are going for this space and we are triggering the 
provisions actions out of this. Yeah, let's do that. And because we already have successfully raided once, our provisions upgrade is a three. Nice, which would be this. And we could use this actually to move one, two, three spaces over here where we could build our tower. And I'm considering to do that. Yeah, let's do that. So we are spending the three we just gained. One, two, three down here. We still have the tower in our supply, which we are adding here for another four victory points. That's how you do it, Blue. Then I think we are going for this action here, which gives us beer and the upgrade action. And again, whenever we are triggering the upgrade action, for the blue player, we are getting ship cards. And when ship cards are used, this allows us to move three spaces. And it also allows us to basically co-locate a space. We don't have to push them away. So they're not blocking our space in any way. This is huge. This is a great card. I'm really happy I have drawn this card, actually. And then we are still taking the beer action. So we are getting three points. So I think we are going to here. And we are going to a three here. And that's basically ending the first round of the game. Now we move off this top tile. Once the last die has been moved off, we are removing the topmost tile on top of this. So this is our round track. And then we do that two more times. But I think so far you have, I think, mainly seen it all. There are, of course, some specialties around these yellow locations, which you have to, let's call it, unlock first. But I think the more thematic ter a term should be, you will find a map of the area. You get that, again, by either trading up to four times or raiding four times. You don't have to have them both. One of these tracks will basically unlock this symbol and then you are allowed to move to the yellow spaces. We have three of those up here and we have three of those up here. There are also these, let's call it special runestone tiles, which give you extra stuff and extra victory points. Whenever you build something in here, you have very powerful battles here in Klontarf or you can really trade quite well in Reykjavik in Iceland for gold of course but they will give you really very very powerful things but apart from that i think so far you should have seen really the majority of this game again i'm definitely not playing an expert game here thinking this through for one player is already challenging doing this for two players is nigh impossible at least for a brain like mine actually <laughs> Really not capable of taking a lot of information in at the same time not after a full day's work that is. But uh, yeah, for today, I will end my little walkthrough playthrough here. Let me know if you want me to continue and I will definitely consider to continue with two more rounds. Maybe I will be able, able to finish the game in the next video because I think again, I have explained to you most of the stuff. So gameplay should be much quicker as of the second round to come. But yeah, just let me know if you're interested or not. And before I forget, a huge shout out to all of my patrons and channel members. You guys are truly amazing. Really can't tell you how much I appreciate all your support. For those of you who are not supporting me yet, you can do so by going to my page on Patreon. Yes, you I will find a link. You can join me here directly on YouTube. There is a thanks button below the video. You can like and subscribe, leave a comment. This also greatly helps the channel and I very much appreciate the contributions there as well. And yeah, with that being said, hope to see you soon in one of my other videos. And yeah, until then, bye bye.